I would like to first greet Chaplain Morgan Dictout. <laughs> I greet you, sir, and your family. I greet my minister, my minister Wright, and his family, all other officers, saints of the Most High God. I greet you in the mighty and in the most powerful name of Jesus. I greet the viewers on our online platforms, YouTube and Facebook. I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. Remember to like, subscribe, and share. <laughs> I'm a technician, so I had to put that in, you know? <laughs> Last but not least, I greet my family who is always here with me. My wife, Shauna, and of course the apple of my eyes, baby Hope Jackson. <laughs> I was saying to them in the office a short while ago that the word went forth from in the morning. So I don't even need to be up here long, right? But let's see what God has in store. <laughs> No, we are under the theme, the undefeated God. And it, com it comes on the heels of the chain breaker, Jesus Christ, the chain breaker. Now, the word undefeated comes from, or derives from defeat which means to win a victory over someone or something in a battle or in any other contest. It means to overcome or to triumph. Therefore, the word undefeated means you have never, ever, will ever suffer a defeat. Now, for one to be labeled as undefeated, it means that such a one had to be tried and tested. It means that such a one must have gone to battle several times and have come out victorious. It means that that is why the writer says I was young and now I am old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor is seed beg for bread. It means that the writer went through several experiences throughout his lifetime to have come to such a conclusion. And it is important for us to note that there is a difference between a win and being undefeated. You cannot come out of a battle victorious one time and be labeled as undefeated. It is just a win. But I hear the words of the Lord says, but when you have suffered a little while, Ah, the God of grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ uh, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Uh, it is only when you have gone through battle after battle and have come out victorious that one can truly be labeled as undefeated. Oh, bless the name of It 
It is important for us to note also that anyone who is susceptible to time and has the ability to fade or decay cannot be undefeated. And that is why, having recognized this fact, many persons in the sporting fraternity seek to retire early so as to preserve their name and their dignity. And we see that in the case of Usain Bolt, where he retired very early because he realized that eventually he would begin to fade away. And the older he gets, the harder it would be for his body to keep up. And so he retired as a legend. It was a calculated strategy. Tell somebody. It was a calculated strategy. I'm going somewhere. Because having retired in his prime, he can now wear the title of living legend until the day he dies. Can I bless the name of Jesus? Can you worship the name of Jesus? Now, God, on the other hand, is undefeated. Uh, he has never lost a battle, and he has never suffered a defeat. Uh, uh, Revelation describes him as the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, heightening, highlighting Jesus' power, his majesty, and his ultimate authority over all creation. Uh, not even death could have defeated him, uh, because even when he's three days later, death has to recognize uh, who it is that it's dealing with. Uh, uh, Revelation tells us as well uh, that he holds the key to death and hell. Uh, I was dead, but behold, uh, I live forevermore. Uh, what manner of man is this uh, uh, that down to the very wind obey his voice? Uh, uh, but I dare to tell you today that it is not only the wind that obeys his voice, uh, but death is under the command of his voice as well. Ah, uh, that is why when Lazarus, when Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth, ah, uh, uh, death had no choice uh, but to release him uh, because death looked into the future and realized that the one who spoke uh, was the one who would eventually defeat death himself uh, and possess the keys. Jesus, I give you praise, God. I give you praise and I give you glory. Ah, uh, no, the songwriter caught the revelation when he said, up from the grave he rose uh, with a mighty triumph over his foes. Uh, he rose a victor from the dark domain and he lives forevermore with his saints to reign. Saints of God, why do you look for the living among the dead? Ah, uh, the stone at the tomb couldn't keep him. The official guard couldn't keep him. Death and the grave couldn't hold our God captive. Hey. 
The grave uh, could not hold him captive uh, because even in the grave, uh, Jesus is Lord. Uh, even in the grave, uh, Jesus is undefeated. Uh, there is never a time uh, that we can say that God was defeated uh, because he lives outside of time. There is never a season that we can say God was defeated because he created and commands the season. Hey. Everything that we can think of that would attempt to defeat God uh, was created by God. Uh, so then we can safely come to the conclusion uh, that the created can never be greater than the creator. And as such, the creator can never be defeated by anything that was created by him. Uh, in other words, God is transcendent. Uh, and what that means is that he is beyond uh, or above the range uh, of normal or physical human experience. Uh, uh, that is why Isaiah says uh, uh, in the book of Isaiah, my thoughts uh, are not your thoughts, uh, neither are my ways your ways ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Uh, no, there is a common theory that says uh, the only thing the devil cannot do is to blow breath, uh, suggesting that God and the devil are somewhat equal in power. But I tell you today uh, that the devil could never be equal to my God in no way, shape, or form. Because the so-called power that Satan possesses is only that which has been allowed to him by God. So the next time someone implies such a thing, remind them that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell in it, church of the living God, anything that is created by God belongs to him. And if it belongs to him, it means that it is under his authority and his power. Thus, giving God victory uh, over time and time again. Uh, the songwriter called the revelation, when he wrote, who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. The victory belongs to Jesus himself. Saints of God, victory belongs to Jesus. He means he owns it. Uh, and if he owns it, it means he cannot and ever will be defeated. Our God is therefore the undefeated champion. Ah, uh, Pharaoh couldn't defeat him. Ah, uh, the Midianites couldn't defeat him. Ah, uh, Goliath and the Philistines couldn't defeat him. And death itself couldn't defeat him. Ah, uh, isn't it strange uh, that people serve and proclaim all of these variations of God, but none of them was as ever defeated the sting of death. None of them possesses power to forgive sins and offer everlasting life. But I hear the songwriter says, Ah, oh God, all other gods, they are the works of men. But you are the most high God. There is none. 
None. None throughout the heavens. None throughout the earth. None throughout the seas. And all that in them is. No one can compare. To our God. saints of God. There is only one mediator between God and men and that is the man Christ Jesus. Uh, that is what makes him undefeated. Isaiah 9 verse 6 says, for unto us a child is born to us a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called wonderful, counselor, mighty God everlasting father prince of peace of the greatest of his government and peace there will be no end now I don't know about you uh, but that sounds like somebody who is undefeated to me uh, it is important for us to note uh, that it wasn't the experiences that Jesus went through uh, that makes him undefeated but he was undefeated from birth He was born as a king, having left the right hand of God in heaven to redeem mankind. He traded his crown of glory for a crown of thorn. Uh, 2 Timothy 4 verse 8 says, Henceforth uh, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, uh, which the Lord, the righteous judge, uh, shall give me on that day, and not to me only, but unto them also that love his appearance. At this point, the enemy thought that it was over when they placed the crown of thorn upon his head. But in essence, the crown of thorn was making way for the crown of righteousness. People of God, uh, we need to know that the God we serve is mighty and we should have confidence in him. I pose the same question to, to, to you today uh, that God posed to Sarah. Is anything too hard for God? I don't care if you're barren. I don't care if you have passed childbearing stage. I, God, created the womb and the reproductive system. Uh, so it is not bigger than I am. Some of you, uh, you might be spiritually barren at this time, uh, unable to give birth to the Holy Ghost, uh, unable to give birth to the gifts uh, that God has ordained for you to have. Uh, but today we speak uh, to every high thing, uh, declaring that they must come down. Uh, we speak uh, to every stronghold, uh, declaring that they shall be broken. Have faith uh, and be of God, good courage, uh, for when the time is right, uh, I, the Lord, will make it happen. It doesn't matter how impossible the situation looks. It doesn't matter what the doctors might say. Uh, whatsoever comes your way, I have already defeated it, says the Lord. Uh, for he was wounded uh, for our transgressions. Uh, he was bruised uh, for our iniquities. Uh, the chastisement uh, of our peace was upon him. Uh, and by 
by his stripes we are healed. Uh, sometimes if we focus on the names of these nowadays sicknesses and disease, they kill you faster than the sickness itself because it causes you to worry and to drive us in fear. Uh, but I've come to tell you uh, that there is a name that is above every other name. At which name every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ to the glory of God the Father. So don't watch the different types of sicknesses. Uh, don't watch the different types of cancer. He has a stripe for that. Uh, don't worry over stroke and heart disease. He has a stripe for that. He is triumphant. He is mighty. And he has overcome the world. There is only one name. There is only one name. With the power to save. With power to save. I heard this in my spirit just now. Hey. There is only one name. There is only one name. one name by which men can be saved. As I said before, there is only one mediator between men and God, and that is the man Christ Jesus. We need to know the God that we serve uh, and show some confidence. Give God some props, man, because he has brought you through a mighty long way. Mighty long way, Lord. Mighty long way. Look where you brought me from. Mighty long way. You brought me out of the depression. You brought me out of the sickness. You brought me out of the financial problems. You are mighty. Elijah showed that confidence when he went to Mount Carmel. Ah, he said, if Baal be a God, serve him. But if my God be God, you better serve him. And I'm not afraid to put my God to the test because I know who wears the victor's crown. My God is champion. My God, he reigns forevermore. And so Elijah uh, moved head to head uh, with Baal and the army. Uh, and he said, wet up the bullocks uh, because I have something to prove. Uh, no, understand this. Uh, God has nothing to prove to men. Uh, but you will understand uh, that God will not put his 
servant to shame uh, because once we call upon the name of Jesus uh, he will answer and in this case uh, he will come down in all his glory because he is uh, the consuming fire head to head pastor and they tried and they tried they tried different tactics but tactics don't work when it comes to the living God you can be a trickster ah you can be a player you can even be a scammer but when it comes to the living God you are no match for his power and his authority and his might So they tried, and they tried, and they tried to no avail. Uh, so Elijah said, uh, what go on, man? It look like your God asleep. What go on, man? It look like your God is deaf. Uh, allow me a little chance to show you the God that I serve. Because the God that I serve, he never sleeps, and he never slumbers, and he hears and he answers and so Elijah said I don't want you to think that it is no magic trick I don't want you to think that it is anything of myself ah, so what I want you to do I want you to wet up wet up the bollocks wet them up, soak them because the last time I check a uh, water out fire uh, so wet it up all you want, you can dip it all you want, you can soak it all you want uh, but my God, he is a consuming fire uh, when it comes to my God his power and his mighty consumes even water And so they wet it up. Ah, they wet it up. I can just imagine how Elijah said, Ah, stand back. Let I have a minute with my God. Ah, stand back. Let I call upon the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Because your God is a self claim king ah, but my God was crowned king ah, from birth and he is from glory ah, to glory and he's from everlasting to everlasting and the Bible says Elijah looked to heaven and he called upon the name of Jesus Ah, how many of us are calling upon the name of Jesus now? How many of us have been calling? Ah, the way I see it, ah, if they can call upon their God, ah, who are we not to call upon our God? And our God is much more mightier. Our God is much more impressive. Our God is much more... And so he called upon the name of Jesus. Thou son of David, have mercy upon me. Ah, it's not for you to prove yourself. Ah, but God, I know that you won't put me to shame. Ah, so the sickness that I'm going through right now, I call upon the name of Jesus. Ah, this lack that I'm going through right now, I'm calling upon the name of Jesus. And I believe that you will hear and you will answer. And Baal and his army watched. And they watched. And they watched. Speechless. Because the consuming fire. Church of God, if God is a consuming fire, it is safe to say, 
that he did not send fire, but he came in his own nature and consumed the sacrifice uh, uh, that was laid up at the altar. Uh, and they burned and they burned. I have overcome. Uh, I have overcome the world, says the Lord. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. Uh, so what is uh, your sickness to me? Uh, what is uh, your burdens to me? Uh, what is uh, your situations to me? Uh, if I live uh, forevermore, it means uh, that I cannot be contained. Uh, so take the limit it's off. Uh, take me out of the box uh, that you have been putting me uh, because I am unlimited. Uh, uh, your situations, uh, they cannot hold me. Your circumstance, uh, they cannot hold me. I defeated the enemy uh, when I was in the wilderness. Uh, he tempted me about three times. Uh, but I said, thou shall not tempt the Lord thy God. That was a defeat in itself. Man shall not live by bread alone. That was not that, that was a defeat in itself. Uh, people of God. Uh, and when they went to brought him to the grave uh, and nailed him upon the altar, I want you to get this uh, that God need to, did not only uh, bring the sins to the cross, uh, but I am picturing in my mind how he may have placed cancer in that cross. He, he may have placed uh, heart disease in the cross. He, he may have placed uh, the different variations uh, of the cares of life uh, and he pulled them uh, to the Calvary cross. He pulled them uh, to the mountain. He pulled them and he nailed them to the cross. He nailed them. So you don't need to worry. You don't need to fret. Because he nailed them. I am undefeated. Because the nail pierced are still in my head. Still in my hand. He is undefeated because the stripes are still up on his back. He is undefeated because on the third day he rose triumphantly out of the grave. The officials did everything that they could to deny God's victory. They placed a stone. They placed guards. But when the stone was rolled away, people of God, when the stone was rolled away, it proved that God is truly undefeated. And if God is undefeated, and we were made in his image and in his likeness, and if he has sent the Holy Spirit, the comforter, it means that we too will never be defeated. And as I close, I want to tune the words of this song.
Jesus Christ is the greatest power. We should never ever be defeated. And because God is the greatest power, we shall never It's the greatest power. 